Welcome to the final game of day four of the FIBA African Women's Basketball League Tournament as Nigeria Customs is set to go against the host team, the Alexandria Sporting Club. I'm Aaron Sanders on the play-by-play. -play. Glad to have you with us, and welcome back. All of these games have been competitive since day one, which occurred on Monday. KPA defeated the University of Douala 74 to 59 to kick day four off. Then Interclube defeated over those upstation 76 to 43. And then Reeds Women BBC staying undefeated as they defeated ASPAC 96 to 65. So that sets things up for this contest here 
and we're glad that you're joining us wherever you may be. Sporting looking to go 3-0 after winning their first two games with a 98-41 victory over CNSS on Monday. And a day later, they took care of business in record fashion, 115-49 against the University of Douala. They were off yesterday. For Customs, they've only played two games of it because of an off day on Tuesday. They defeated Douala 57-45 on Monday, and they lost to KPA by 20 with the final score of 73-53. Key players to watch as we are moments away from tip-off. We'll start with Customs, their leading score, and in a big way, Inkim Akararwe with 18 points. That's seventh in the tournament so far. And as far as rebounds are concerned, that's going to be a huge key because she is the leading rebounder with 14 and a half coming into today. For Sporting, they have a couple of players, but one player to keep in mind, Hager Ammer, who has stepped up after day one of the competition. She averages 19.5 points per game, along with nine rebounds, and she shoots 44% from the field. Sporting putting up big numbers in their final scores. They have still yet to have a blemish on their undefeated record in this tournament averaging 106 and a half points per game and when you win with the scores of 98 and 115 that's sort of hard to manage if you're the opposition but customs will have a crack at it they average 55 points per game and they are fourth in the rebounds with nearly 50. sporting averages 51 rebounds per game so this may be a matter of who could be the bully of the boards today and who could establish the tempo early on in the game because believe you and me sporting could pick up the tempo right away but customs they have an interesting game to say the least as we are of the awbl group play And you listen to the young fans out there counting down the clock until it's showtime. And that's what it's all about. Fans, young and old, enjoying this incredible competition, all residing at the Alexandria Sporting Club for the inaugural FIBA AWBL. Before this year, the tournament was named the African Women's Champions Cup. So a new name, same tournament. But tough competition as tournament play begins on Sunday. The moments away from the opening tip. And Sporting will be wearing their green uniforms with white trim. Customs, white uniforms with green trim. And for Customs, Akararwe will tip it off with Fatu Gagne. And Diagne wins the tip for Sporting. Looking to have an unblemished record to wrap up group play. Shot doesn't go. Amer goes for the rebound twice, and she picks up contact right away. And Hager Amir having a good outing at the free throw line in the AWBL, 85.7%. And that first free throw is indicative of that as she opens up the scoring here in the second last day of group play in this matchup. She goes two for two to the line. We are underway with Sporting drawing first blood. Something that they are used to. And another chance at, a, at some free throws as Kim Akararwe gets it down. And she is off to the line. She's been playing in FIBA since 2014, but this is her first tournament with Nigeria Customs as she previous played, previously played for First Bank. 70% free throw shooter. And again, a key player to watch for Nigeria Customs. She is unable to complete the three-point play. We are even at two. 
Amir down deep to Diagne. Diagne falls away. That is short. Rebound, Arcarawi. Into the hands of Mary Ann Renee Johnson. Jumper from the corner connects. That's a long two. As Azibaye Mac Denzgozu gets it down. Diagne far away at the three point line. Sierra Diller with the ball. Straight out to Amir. Long bomb. Can't get it. You talk about tempo, and it's evenly matched right now. As Customs has the lead, fadeaway jumper off the mark for Arcarawi. Dillard on the drive, in from the right, scoops it off, tough shot, double pump off the mark. Yachne the rebound, kisses it off the glass, can't get it in. Dillard gets the rebound. Backer driving down into Amir, can't get it. Diagne falls away, tough shot, and gets it in. You have to count. There must have been about three rebounds in that possession. Nonetheless, we are tied at four. Isabel Gonzalez Fuente, one of the guards who just gave the ball up. Leaping leaner. Can't get it. And Diagne retains the ball for Customs. On the other end of the court, they get an easy deuce out of that one. We play two minutes here in the final game of day four of competition in the FIBA AWBL, live from the Alexandria Sporting Club. Gonzalez Fuente kicks it right out. Back in deep to Akarari. Akarari guarded by Backer. And Ezra Backer picks up her first foul of the night. We'll take a look at Coach Abdurrahman Mohammed, whose team has a one and one record in Group A play. Akarare, far side. Back to Johnson. Taiwo seeks entry. And they took too much time on the shot clock as Azibaye Mac Denguzu was not aware. So that turns the ball over. Back to Sporting it goes. Remember, Sporting is in their road uniforms. Green jerseys, white trims, customs, white jersey, green trim. And Amir is able to pick it up and get two. So Hager Amir with some quick points in the early going. As Sporting takes a four-point lead. Akarare is able to get swallowed up by the traffic, and she has a pair of free throws coming up. If you're a fan of not letting up, this is the game for you. The tempo has picked up since the first minute, and we have seen that ever since. As, a, as the first free throw connects, Razi Baye Mactengozi, 75% from the line in the tournament. No look or free throw, doesn't connect. She goes one for two with Sierra Dillard, bursting with speed, cutting in from the right, goes for the leaner and gets it down. So an easy floater for Sierra Dillard, who averages eight points per game in the first two games of this tournament. 10-5 sporting. Johnson with the ball, gets the nice seal, and gives the ball to Akarawe, which is taken away. Sporting with numbers, looking for the foul, but they will not get it. Eighteen seconds on the shot clock. Sporting throws it in straight to Amir. Amir, jumper from Dagne, yes. Right off the inbounds pass into the free throw line as Dagny connects to make it 12-5. Mary Ann Renee Johnson trying to streak through tonight. Entry inside. Great back to Akararwe. Akararwe trying to put the step on Amir.
stopped in her tracks. Jumper goes from the far side. Marilyn Ogoigbe. But Diagne takes care of business on the other end to make it 14 to 7. And here comes the points. Diagne swats it out of bounds. That's what blocks are all about. Perfect timing from Fatu Babo Diagne. Shot clock remains at 17. As we see the first substitution of the ball game. So Yassin Diop checks in. She usually gets into the rhythm around the second and third quarter as she takes Norhan Ahmed's spot. And we're almost ready to resume play, and when we do, Marianne Renee Johnson will give the inbound pass. A little bit of delay of game. While we have that, let's quickly look at the scores from today's competition. KPA defeating the University of Douala 74 to 59, and Interclue with a 76 to 43 victory over Overdose Upstation, and Reach Women BBC remaining undefeated in Group B play, defeating ASPAC 96 to 65. And Tiffany Mitchell, one of the players to watch in this tournament, having another 20-point outing. She ended up with. An emphatic and an impressive double-double yesterday, along with her teammate Destiny Biloxi. So as group phase transitions into tournament play starting on Sunday, there's no doubt that the world will be watching that team and possibly sporting. That could be the matchup for the gold medal match if we get to it and if these teams get far enough. But upsets have been known to happen in these FIBA tournaments. We're unable to recognize what the stoppage of play is all about. And hopefully we're able to get some more information in the next few moments. been a good game so far seven points for custom 14 for sporting and the leading scorer for custom right now is Azibaye Dengozu with three points she's perfect from the field and Fatu Diagne with six points all of them coming from underneath the basket both clubs having a conference and the referees looking to see if everything is a go at the scores table Play has been stopped for about three minutes now. And we are unable to find out what the reason of the stoppage of play is. Nonetheless, what we do know right now is that there is five minutes and 41 seconds left in the opening quarter. Sporting has one more foul to give. In customs, they have three to give. Could there be a synchronization issue with the clock, maybe? Because we see them pointing up to the scoreboard down on what we are seeing as the east end of the sporting club. So it looks like they will pay attention to that clock. Assuming there is problems with the scoreboard clock on the west end. And if I'm right... That is bonus points for me. We are finally back in the play as Akararwe gets the inbounds pass straight away. Johnson connects on the triple. Hey, it took about a couple of minutes, but we finally got a basket. 
14 to 10 is the score. Customs breaks the double digit barrier. And Sierra Dillard slows things down. Dillard straight to Amir. That's a three. She can't put her there. Dagne try to reach in for the rebound. And Mary Ann Renee Johnson with that three in the last possession. Her first bucket of the match. And she has an assist to her name on top of that. Ball was taken, was slapped out of bounds by Diop, so Nigeria Customs will inbound it from the sideline. Both teams have to be aware that they have to pay attention to the scoreboard on the east end, as that will be the only clock that is working at the moment. And the odd one. Darkararwe again trying to Get inside to the paint, finds Judson at the free throw line, and she connects. It is now a one possession game yet again. So Johnson with five quick points. Right out of the quick delay, Amir's shot is a no-go from the left corner. Nigeria Customs looking for a screen a little too late on that. And Macden Gozu beats Yadmi at the rim, and that ball is slapped out of bounds. And that's a foul on Diagne. So one more foul from ASC will put them over the foul limit for the rest of the quarter. As Macden Gozu heads to the line. And the first free throw goes. And she has four points, half of them coming from the charity strike. And those who misses the second free throw. Rebound, Amir. Straight in the hands of Yassin Diop. Backer trying to go deep in to Dillard. We have a foul off the ball. More than three minutes in counting. Now we have a substitution on the play. Customs making some changes. So that was Marianne Renee Johnson with the foul. And Nosafat Jimo checks in for Mac Danguzu. The Agne and Backer checks out for Sporting as Destiny Pitts and Nurala Adalalin takes their places. Diop, nice fake, but she was met at the rim. Couldn't get anything there off of that deflection. Here's Jimo, who gives the ball away immediately. Akarari trying to drive in from the left. Skips it over instead. Jimo near the three-point line, faked by Taiwo. Taiwo on the pass down to the far side. Dribble drive. Basket doesn't go for a good jiggy. The off to Dillard. Dillard high low pass inside to Amir. Yes, and it counts. Hacker Amir with a chance for a three point play. And Dillard was with her all the way as she gets pinned with the assist. Hager Amir right away with the free throw and she gets it in. So Amir with seven points. The game's leading score. Dillard takes it away. Can't get the three. Follows through with her own rebound but couldn't get it. Jimo the rebound. Johnson trying to lob it in. But it slips through the hands of one of her teammates. Goes back to Sporting. Four-point game. Sporting is over the limit in fouls. 
Back to Amir. Amir bursts through the lane immediately. And she got stripped. So Arthur Arway comes up with the foul. And with that foul, that sends her back to the bench. And she has two personal fouls at the moment. So she has a seat for what could be the rest of the quarter. You don't want to get your lead score into foul trouble. And there's a steal from Johnson. Johnson in deep, two passes later. Aniamba rejects the shot. Five seconds on the 24. Jimmo has to put it up, but Johnson does anyway and doesn't hit iron. Here's Sierra Diller looking for Amir, who couldn't put the clamps down. And that tie-up will give the ball back to Nigeria Customs. Sierra Diller do not leave her open for a nice no-look pass. She has done a number of those since the start of this tournament. And she averages seven assists per game. Johnson to Gimo. She is fouled. Alexandria Sporting Club is the defending champions of this tournament per se, even though it's under a different name this year. They won the Africa Women's Champions Cup last year by defeating Costa de Sol from Mozambique all the way back in Maputo a year ago. They're looking to defend the championship, and they are up by three, and they may be on the precipice by getting a 3-0 record if they're able to hold on to this lead. But plenty of ball game to go as Ezra Backer goes for the shot and draws contact. So if you include the AWBL's history along with the African Women's Champions Cup, Customs looking for their first ever podium appearance. As Norella Aldolalim goes one for two at the line. It makes it 18-13. 18-13 with 2.08 remaining here in the first. Double pressure, double teamed applied, broken up. And Customs connects on the three, courtesy of Oluwatomi Taiwo. Dillard, the pass, Aimer for three, in and out. And Johnson tight ropes the sideline, gets stopped in her tracks, met by the double team. Taiwo hands it to Johnson, back to Taiwo. Taiwo guarded heavily by Pitts, but is able to break free from there. Five seconds on the shot clock, and she's able to draw the foul. Now both clubs over the limit in fouls. As Sierra Dillard Picks up the foul. Taiwo knocks down the first. Taiwo averages 13 points per game. She's 80% down at the charity stripe. In the meantime, Dillard checks out with one foul to her name. Taiwo goes perfect from the line. And it's back to a one-point game. Taiwo now with her fourth point. Will make that fifth point. 
Ball goes into the backcourt for his last touch by Nigeria Customs. Yassim Diop will throw the ball in. Adolali goes back to the inbounder and Diop. Diop streaking through the lane and can't get it off the glass and in. She gets her own rebound, fakes, drives, sends it into Amir. Can't get that one to go. Diop another rebound. This time gets the J. And Sporting is good for getting those second chance opportunities. They average 51 rebounds per game. And now you know why. Down to the far side, long bomb. Can't get that one to go. Rebound Amir. Amir's going to take it all the way herself. And too strong on the layup. Diop fighting for the ball, but it appears to be a push. So Customs at the line, Arthur Rarway there. First free throw is missed. Incidentally, that is Marilyn Agoyji. First trip at the free throw line in the tournament. Unable to connect on the second free throw. We have a whistle following the release. So a lane violation, so they'll do it again. Goy Bay unable to connect on the second. Taiwo brings the ball out, guarded heavily by Pitts. Taiwo in trouble. Shot clock winding down, down to two. Taiwo met by the double team, can't get the shot off in time. Good double team from Sporting. As we approach the final seconds here in the opening quarter. So Nigeria Customs making some changes for what could be the final possession of the first quarter. Reem Musa called for the travel. Picked up her pivot foot as she was looking for the Euro step and its separation to get the left-handed layup to drop. So a key key will inbound. Straight away over near the half-court line. Sharon can't get it off in time. And that ends the first quarter. A close one, to say the least. Sporting leads Nigeria Customs 20-18 at the end of one. We'll be back in just a moment as you're watching continuing coverage of day four of the 2023 FIBA African Women's Basketball League.
Well, Hager Amir, one of the leading scorers in this tournament, averages 19 and a half points per game along with nine rebounds. And in the first 10 minutes of play, she got seven points and five rebounds on par for that. And she is, and she is the leading scorer for this game so far and for Sporting. Rick, Mary Ann Renee Johnson with five points for Customs along with Ola Olu Taiwo with five points. As we're underway here in the second quarter, the jumper goes to get things going. 22 to 18 the score. As Yassine Diop gets on the board. And this is a quarter where Yassine Diop starts to heat up as Destiny Pitts takes it away. But Customs returns a favor but can't get the three. Ready to the 18 is the score. Out of bounds was called. So back it goes to the way of Sporting. Sporting the host team of this year's AWBL and the defending champion in under its previous name as Destiny Pitts streaks by for two. Last year this tournament was known as the African Women's Champions Cup and Sporting this very team in green won it all. They're looking to defend their championship under a tournament with a brand new name which has been successful so far. Tough layup goes down as Kim Akarare gets onto the scoring groove and so does Destiny Pitts again. So four quick points for Destiny Pitts to open up the second quarter. Taiwo driving in in trouble. Macden Gozu four to shoot. Long three. Doesn't go down. It hit every part of the rim besides the net. Yasin Diop. Yes. Diop with four points to get the scoring going in the second quarter. It is a six-point sporting lead. We played two minutes in quarter number two. And the ball will go the other way. As there was an offensive foul call. Incidentally, Destiny Pitts got the assist off that Diop jumper. Back in the play as Reem Musub disses it out. Oh, a no-looker three! How in the world did that happen? I have seen no-look passes in this tournament, but not a no-looker three. Talk about the sheer confidence as Destiny Pitts gets that from three-point land, and Customs returns the favor with the layup. You have to admire the confidence of these ladies in this tournament. It has been phenomenal. We've seen the players of Sierra Dillard, Tiffany Mitchell, Destiny Filoxi. As Akarari gets the layup on the other end. Pitts again from three-point land. First, a no-look. Yes, I know that's going in three. And uh, I'm going to keep on looking at this three and follow through three. So Destiny Pitts adds six points in the last 30 seconds to give Customs a 12-point lead, the largest in the game. And Sporting comes up with the first foul in the second quarter. And we have a timeout called with 6.33 remaining until halftime. Sporting breaking through the door scoring-wise in the second quarter, outscoring Customs 14 to four.
Destiny Pitts has been the story in the first three and a half minutes of the second quarter as she connected on back-to-back -back triples to bring her total up to 10 points. Perfect from the line, from three-point land rather, and four for four overall from the field. And now Customs with the ball, facing their largest deficit today. Kim Arcarare, one of the leading scorers, limited to single digits at the moment. Six points for Arcarare. As Ogranduku goes for the pass, shot is missed as the shot clock buzzer expires. Musa, in and out dribble, stopped down with the left elbow, but finds Aldalalim right on time. The fake from Tayo. Tayo looking for an opening, get it in Akarare. The shoot, Akarare gets the ball back, guarded heavily, and knocks it down. Nakarari comes up with eight points here in the game. Pits another three. Can you say other? Unbelievable. 13 points for Destiny Pitts, and nine of them coming here in the first half of the second quarter. As the ball gets turned over, it's back into the hands of ASC. Destiny Pitts, flawless from the field goal range today. On the floor for Sporting out Alali, Musa, Pitts, Arrehan, Ambin Yusuf. And Ar Yusuf with the ball. A little too much of an elbow to Renee Johnson. And that turns the ball over. For customs, Arcarare, Johnson, Oharinduku, Ogoibi, and Taiwo are the five. Sporting up 15, a scoring explosion led by Destiny Pitts as they outscore Customs 19 to 6. And it was a close game at the end of one when Sporting led by two, 20 to 18. Things have changed dramatically since then as is the confidence of this game. And Hart Okar Renduku had her pass deflected out of bounds, so they'll inbound it underneath the basket. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Akarari able to break away to get the pass. Johnson. And it stays with Nigeria Customs. Johnson going behind the back. Stops at the left elbow and connects. Pretty sequence from Marianne Renee Johnson. Musa. Pits outside. But it's out of Lalim who goes for the layup and can't get that one to go. Double team applied. Broken by Kim Akarare. Akarare almost lost her dribble, picks it up. Johnson spots up and gets the J. Crowd looking on as the scoring picks up on Nigeria Customs' side. Yusuf for three, way off. Picked up by Customs and down to the other end, Aniawa. And the foul. So the foul is called as. Ola Ola with Tony Taiwo. He'll head to the line. 
for her third and fourth trip. Five points for Tyro so far with two rebounds and a steal. And she connects on the first. Played nearly 16 minutes. So she has played the entire game at the moment. And remains perfect at the line. She has seven points. The only field goal was from three-point land. Now the rest have come from the charity stripe. Pitts thought about the three, but gave it to Adolalu. Pitts on the triple threat. Back into Adolalu. Clock winding down, hits it hard off the glass. Side out with one second to shoot. On the shot clock. They're going to have to catch and shoot it. It's going to be interesting what they draw up here. Dillard finding Amir. Beats the shot clock buzzer but misses it. And it didn't hit rim so, they'll, so that turns the ball over. Four minutes to go until halftime. The lead has been cut down to single digits again. And Agoyji unable to get the pass as it blows right past him. Dillard with the ball. Into the hands of Diagne. Dillard back out to Pitts. Misses the three. The Akne had a little bit of a tip of it, but Oko Renduku gets it. Now they have to break the timeline before the eight second violation. And they do. They avoid a backcourt violation. And even though they did that, they were unable to keep the ball in bounds on the sideline. Coming up at about three minutes to go until halftime. 39-30, ASC with the lead. Pitts with the ball. Pitts on the pass to Amer. Pitts gets the screen from Amir. Amir with the finish, counted in a foul. Hager Amir continues to pile up on the scoring. Even though she hasn't played much in the second quarter, she has been able to step up as she connects with her ninth point of the ball game, and she is set for her fourth trip at the line today. At the five rebounds, assist, and a steal, she is on par of her scoring average, which is about 19 and a half. She connects on it and breaks double digits. Not a bad start for Hager Amir. Four or four from the line. Though a negative factor would be her shots. Three of 12 from the field. And the ball's recovered by Opera. And Oniawa. And that's stripped away. 224 remaining. Four seconds on the 24. The Nigeria Customs. They have to put it up. They do, but can't get it. Rebound Amir. Down deep to Dillard. Dillard going with the in and out dribble. She gets the ball back down to the far side. Diagni straight in. Finger rules missed by Yusuf. Putbacks missed by Diagni. And back around to Nigeria Customs kickball. 
and Sierra Dillard knew it. So they'll inbound it from the sideline. Customs in trouble, bailed out by Akararu. Tend to shoot under two minutes to go. Taiwo behind to Johnson. Back to Taiwo. Taiwo fakes, leans in, and hits. Ola Ola with Tommy Taiwo with time winding down, couldn't pick up her pivot foot and insisted on the long two instead. Back to a 10 point game. Diagne had the ball swallowed up, recovered by Amir. Backer out. In, straight into Diogni. And she has a pair of free throws coming up. Minute 26 left. A 10 point sporting lead, which started in an outburst. At one point, they were outscoring Nigeria Customs 19 to 9 to get things going here in the second frame, but that has been improved to 22 to 14. First free throw is a no go for Diagni. Diagni with six points, five boards, and one foul. Her first trip to the free throw line, and she missed the first, and she makes the second. One of two for Diagni, as she has seven points. And a timeout is called with a minute and 11 seconds remaining until the break. Sporting leads Nigeria Customs by the score of 43 to 32. Back live at the Alexandria Sporting Club, where sporting the home team of this year's FIBA AWBL is leading Nigeria Customs by 11. And Nigeria Customs slowly but surely getting right back into this ball game. And there was a time where they were being outscored 19 to 9. They have scored five points since then. And they were able to cut the lead to 11. They have the ball now until this very moment. Taken away. Customs has numbers. As Dillard sends it to Diagne, misses it from the right elbow. Under 60 seconds remaining. Akararwe will throw it in. Johnson guarded by Dillon. Johnson picks up her dribble. Over to Jimmo. Final seconds on the shot clock. They have to look up. They were able to get a foul from Sporting. With seconds remaining. That's the fourth team foul for Sporting. Next one will put them over the limit. Hager Amir with the foul. So Amir picks up her first foul. They have to put it up. Nice fake. Can't get the jumper to go. Diller brings it up court. 
And Dillard gets it back. And too short on the three. Akarari with the ball. And a chance for one more shot before halftime. Picks up her dribble. She's in trouble. Taiwo. They have to put it up. Diller with the long bomb. And that goes into the crowd. And that ends the first half. Sporting leads Nigeria Customs 43 to 32. And leading Sporting for most part is Hager Amir who has 10 points and six rebounds. But the leading scorer is Destiny Pitts who was able to connect on three triples in the beginning of the second quarter. She has a total of 13 points. Sporting leads by 11 at the break. This is Aaron Sanders. We'll be back for the second half of the final game of day four of the 2023 FIBA African Women's Basketball League in just 15 minutes.
sporting with a 43 to 32 lead over Nigeria Customs as we are moments away from this third quarter and the second half in this final matchup in day four of the 2023 FIBA African Women's Basketball League. Aaron Sanders here. And in the first quarter, it was pretty close, but in the second quarter, Sporting was able to break through scoring-wise, courtesy of Destiny Pitts, whose three triples have led them to another convincing game at the moment. She has 13 in lead scoring for the game so far. And her teammate, Hagar Amir, has 10 points and six rebounds. For Nigeria Customs, Ola Olawatomi Taiwo, who's played the entirety of the first half, has nine points along with two rebounds and a steal. There was a time where Sporting limited Customs to under six points in the second quarter alone, but with them being able to outscore Nigeria Customs 23 to 14, they were able to get a double digit lead into the break it was 20 to 18 in favor of ASC the host team and the defending champions of this tournament known by a different name last year mind you as the African Women's Champions Cup but it is a new name same competition and Sporting's doing an exceptional job of defending the championship and they were able to do it in convincing way this is a team that averages 106 and a half points per game. Well indicated by scoring 98 points in their first game on the 11th. A convincing victory against CNSS. And they defeated the University of Douala 115. That's right, 115 to 49. For Customs, they have a 1-1 one one record. They defeated Douala 57 to 45 in their opening match. And then they took the second the second day off, which is 12th, and they lost to KPA by 20. They have the ball to begin the second half. Wide open is Isabel Gonzalez Fuentes. Fuentes feeds it to Arcarare. Arcarare gets it down. And Arcarare with her 10th point, she now leads scores for Nigeria Customs. And Arcarare one of the top scorers, matter of fact, came into this game seventh in scoring with 18 points per game, limited to eight points in the half. Diagne puts it back. As we're well underway. So Diagne capitalizes. And it's back to an 11 point game. A minute has gone by here in the third. Johnson stops. And Arcarare goes for the fake. Behind the back to Gonzalez Fuente, who couldn't deliver on the three. Sierra Dillard. Pitts, three, no. Sporting right now shooting 41% from the field. And Custom shooting 52%. Remember, Customs had a nice scoring run near the end of the first half. They get them back in this ball game. Azra Baker gets it off the glass and in. Azra Baker with her first bucket of the night. To make it 47 to 34. Akarare in trouble, finds the ball again. This time the banker doesn't go for Nasafat Jimo. Pitt, who had the hot hand in the second quarter, refers it to a mayor who misses the three. Actually, that was a Zar backer, and you saw in the bottom corner, she was not pleased with that attempt. Akarare, oh, she gets the step on a mirror. Finds an opening to Gonzalez Fuente and delivers. Akarare is able to get on that triple threat and break away in order for Gonzalez Fuente to connect on her first bucket of the day. And Diagne responds on the other end. So 
So Diagne with her 11th point. Backcourt violation not called as Akarare is able to get it down. Six to shoot, Johnson. Johnson looking to get bailed out, heaves away, and that's off the front. This is Ezra Backer. Backer goes for three. And a rebound by Taiwo, who hands it off to Johnson with ease. Johnson guarded by Dillard. Trying to retreat to the corner. Three seconds to shoot. Johnson, too much time. So the double teaming efforts as Johnson reached the far corner pays extreme dividends for Sporting. They have a 13 point lead with six minutes and change left. Usually Sporting would run away with these games, but they are facing what appears to be their best competition in the tournament thus far. Offensive foul is card, which means the ball will go the other way. And Ola Ola with Toby Taiwo will throw it in. Gonzalez Fuentes guarded by Backer. And Backer with the steal. And she has daylight. And she can't finish. But Hager Amir can. So it's 51 to 36 in favor of Sporting. And another steal. Backer again. Backer with back-to-back -back buckets. Or do you call it backer-to-backer? -backer? Nonetheless, it's 53-46 to 46 in favor of Sporting. And Customs will take a timeout. They'll take a break as Sporting is breaking through with yet another scoring run. Baker Amir and Ezra Backer connected on back-to-back -back buckets due to the smothering defense of Sporting out of the backcourt. And it has paid off for them as they lead by 17. Nigeria Customs in trouble as they're being outscored 10 to 4 here in the third quarter. We played more than four minutes in the second half as Akarare looking for an opening. And finds it this time in Mac Dengozu. Johnson almost had it stripped. Back to Akarare. Tylo streaking through, can't get the bucket. But she drew the contact. Off to the line she goes. Taiwo with four rebounds and nine points. She is at the line for a fifth and sixth free throw. Gets the first one. And now she has ten points along with her teammate Kim Makarari.
and has no blemishes at the free throw line. Six of six, and now the leading scorer for Customs with 11. Backer from deep, and she did not get it. It hit the net, but it did not go through the net. 5.15 to go. Nice behind the back dribble. Sends it out to Mac Dangozu, who could not finish the job. Back to Musa in deep. Amir. So that puts Hager Amir at the line. 12 points so far for Amir. Going for a fifth and six free throws here, too. She's near a double-double. She gets the first free throw, 13 points, eight rebounds for the day. And continues to be perfect at the line. Six of six, 14 points. She's now the game's leading scorer with 14, surpassing her teammate Destiny Pitts, who has 13. Diagne down low with the board. Musa pushing the tempo. Cross court pass. Pitts for three. And she does it again. Destiny Pitts rising up on the occasion and gets the catch and shoot three. That is her fourth three pointer today. Four of six from the field from downtown, 16 points she has, and now she has the ball. She's trying to connect again, way short. She was looking for the foul, but did not get it. Destiny Pitts, six of eight from the field, four of six from downtown, along with two rebounds and an assist. And Pitts has matched her point average in this tournament, averaging 16 and a half, she has 16. Usually shoots 65% from the field. She's shooting 66. Johnson looking for a screen. Johnson darting into the left side. And gives it up to Arcarare, who puts it in. 58 to 40. Under four minutes to go. Musab directing the offense. Well down low. So three forty three remaining in the third quarter. Sporting with one of their largest leads so far. Take a look at the team comparisons. As Diogne is at the line, an unsportsmanlike foul, so Sporting will get the ball back regardless. 59 to 40 is the score. Sporting out rebounding Customs 32 to 22. The largest scoring run for Sporting is a 7-0 run. For Customs, a 6-0 run. The largest lead is 20, which we saw not so long ago. Musov gets the ball back in the play. Musov driving, a good no-look pass. Pitts back out, in deep. Rahan, jumper from Diagne, gets it in. So that ties the largest lead in the ball game as Diagne continues to hit. Three quick points for her. One of two from the unsportsmanlike free throws. And now that J from on the right side. The ball stays with Nigeria Customs. Taiwo. Gets it to Gonzalez Fuentes. Another 
Another shot clock violation as favorite Chiamaka Opara thought there was somebody behind her. He's looking for the extra pass, unaware of the shot clock going down. And that forced the turnover. Here's another three. Off the mark for R. Rahan. Yagne try to keep it alive. And it appears it will stay with Sporting. And it will. Reed Musa. Underneath the basket. Up top to Diagne. R. Rahan thought about the three. But changed her mind. The reverse from Diagne. Courtesy of Nohan Ahmed. So now this is the kind of game a lot of viewers and teams have seen from Sporting as they have bust open the lead. It is a 23-point game. Basket doesn't go for Akarari. Tough break here in the third quarter for Customs, and Hamid finishes the job. Norhan Ahmed. Getting it up and in. Akarari trying to get the step. And this time's able to go inside. Backed in her tracks. Jumper from the corner. No good. Musa bursting with speed and lost control of the ball, taken away by Oniawa. Oniawa looking for contact but doesn't get it. We have a late whistle. changes as we approach the final minute and a half of the third quarter. Looks like Gina Hamid will come in on the next dead ball. And we have an injury down at the other end. Hopefully get some information on what that is. Narada Abdullalim incidentally comes in for R. Rahan. A big gamble at the three, but that doesn't go. You see one of the sporting players being tended to. Appears to be a bloody nose. In 11 to go. Three ball, Ahmed. No. Crossover dribble to Zanz Fuentes. Can't get the triple. And Mac Danguzu. Looking for his second chance basket. But did not deliver. Yassin Diop set the check in. Again, the medical staff tending to one of the sporting players. It's a foul on Diagne, so that sent Mac then goes into the line. And she can't connect on the first. Four points of the day, along with two rebounds. Second free throw connects. Five points for Danguzu. Custom shooting 53% from the free throw line. In this contest. And Yassin Diop gets swallowed up by a tough defense from Nigeria Customs. They find themselves in a 24-point hole as we approach the fourth quarter. 
Nice break from Mac Gangozu. Will they get continuation? Yes, they do. Basket and a foul as Zanguzu heads back to the free throw line. So Matt Gangozu with seven points looking to make it eight. Trying to get this deficit to under 20 points. They can't do that. Last touch by Looks like it was last touched by Customs. Well, matter of fact, we see Okiki throwing it in. Okiki on the fake, can't drive. Gonzalez Fuentes with the ball again. Less than 20 seconds on the clock. Long bomb. What a long bomb. And that will bring up the confidence of anybody as Reed Musa has the ball. The final seconds here in the third quarter. No look pass. Not going anywhere. And that closes out the third quarter. And it is a 19 point lead for Sporting as they lead Customs 65 to 46. We'll be back for the fourth quarter in the final game of day four of the 2023 FIBA African Women's Basketball League in just a moment. Sporting shooting 42.6% from the field today, and they usually average 49%. For Customs, they're shooting nearly 44%, and regularly they would average around 30. They're doing well as far as shooting goes, but they are still down by nearly 20. As we begin the fourth quarter, Rebusa over to Hamid, going for the three, that rattles in and out. Diop try to go for the rebound, but can't get that one. Big score for Customs is Cam Arcarare, who is on the bench with 12 points. Destiny Pitts and Fatu Diagne for Sporting, tied as the leading scorers with 16 apiece. And it's taken away by Gina Hamid. Good heads up play from her. And they have to hurry up. And Reem is able to break the timeline. Musaf thought about it. Corner pits three. No. One minute in to the fourth quarter. O'Hara and Duku. O'Hara and Duku gives it to Ogoibe and can't get that one to go. But she may be looking at free throws in just a moment. And she does. 
Lloyd's D, 0 for 2 from the line today. And tough break on the first. And this is both. They're able to get a break here as Oharanduku sends it in and Hamid comes up with it. Musa rushing the floor. Musa in deep. Reverse layup, no good. And another free throw chance coming up. Next. Second free throw goes for Norella Aldalali. Lalim picking up on her fourth point today. 20 point game as it remains. Stays with Customs as Okiki. Passes it up top to Gonzalez Fuentes. Gonzalez Fuentes. Wing left, hands off to O'Haran Duku. Desperation shot doesn't connect. Musav finding Hamid. And Gina Hamid really get those open opportunities but they're able to capitalize on the fast break. As it's 68 to 46. Gonzalez Fuentes. Trying to go deep. But Okaranduku goes inside instead and gets slapped on the arm. Oharan Duku set the check herself at the free throw line for the first time today. With three rebounds and an assist. Customs making some changes. As Oharan Duku is looking for her first point of the ball game, she can't get it. One more free throw. Customs, a one and one record. Had an off day on the 12th. Second free throw doesn't connect. Wow Sporting, 2 0 record in Group A competition after taking a day off yesterday. Both teams will conclude group play tomorrow. And mind you, all game times will start half an hour later than usual tomorrow, so be sure to check the schedule for that. The game will start at 12.30 local time, and the final game of the match will end at 9.30 p.m. local time. We'll go down the daily schedule near the end of the game. Musa picks it up from the Hamid Steel. Musa driving inside and gets the bucket and the foul. And Sporting was wondering when Musa was going to get on the scoreboard, and she finally did. And she may add one more at the free throw line. And Musa, in this tournament alone, shoots 50% from the field, 40% from the field, I should say, 50 from the line. And that free throw doesn't go. She may get another one here on the lane violation. He has played for the Egypt national team since 2019. And that one works. She has three points for the night. And makes the score 70 to 46. 71 now to 46. 
Johnson streaking through the lane, and it's taken away by you-know-who, Reem Musa. But they couldn't control the ball. Customs capitalizing on the broken play. No foul there as Gina Hamid brings it up court. Hamid, a gorgeous feed. Amir! Hamid to Amir. A beautiful wraparound pass. And it finishes off with the reverse layup. Taiwo gets the three. Well, let's see who responds next. Lucif cuts in from the right. How about another three? That doesn't connect. Hamid, the rebound. Can't get the put back, but she gets another rebound. Diop driving. Diop will head to the line. We're halfway into the fourth quarter. Yassi and Diop, her first trip to the line tonight. Six points, two rebounds. In 15 and a half minutes on the floor. Got the first one. And she misses the second one. That is her first miss from the line of this tournament. Diop gets the put back. So she missed her second free throw, but is able to get it back. So that adds two more for Yassine Diop. Fell underneath. As we roll on here in regulation. Akarare at the stripe. And Akarare hits. Her 13th point. As she knocks down her first free throw. She is one of two at the line. Four assists, three rebounds. Gets both. 14 points for Akarare. Same with Ola Olawatomi Taiwo, her teammate for Customs. And three players on sporting are tied as the leading scorers. Fatu Dagne and Destiny Pitts who are on the bench. And Hagar Amir, who is on the court, they all have 16. Amir with a red hot first quarter. And then Destiny Pitts heated up in the second. And Dagne was able to contribute every step of the way. Another turnover for. Nigeria Customs. That is their 20th turnover of the game. Long shot. Along with the whistle. State with Sporting as Gina Hamid checks out. And a solid performance from Gina Hamid. Outside of the two points she has, she has four rebounds and an assist with two steals. And Amir back at the line. Two rebounds away from a double double. And remains flawless at the line. Eight for eight, 18 points. Akarare with the fake to Abdulaziz. 
They're unable to get the shot. Dillard feeding it. Musa finding Amir. And the scoring continues for Hager Amir as she's near the 20 point mark. And Nigeria Customs responds on the other end, courtesy of Marianne Renee Johnson. Rusev steadily dribbles. Amir, or R. Rahan, rather. Either way, they lost control. Sierra with the steal. Amir, will Musov get a chance to score? Defers it to Dillard, who misses the three. Dillard gets the rebound again. And out of all that calamity, Customs comes up with the ball. Under four minutes now. Johnson finds an opening. It appears to be a kick ball. It will stay with Customs. Four minutes to go. Akarari gives the ball to Johnson. Johnson looking for Akarari, but that ball flies out of bounds. And we'll go back to Sporting. The alert gets the nice screen from our Rahan. Another feed to Hager Amir. Hager Amir, 22 points today. Doesn't get any better for her into this game. Shot goes off. Dillard tight ropes the sideline as she brings it down to the floor. Dillard takes it in herself, misses it. Is able to get contact. So with that, that will send Dillard to the line. And Customs with some more substitutions. Led by Azibe Makdanguzu. Dillard makes her first free throw of the day. That gives her three, along with her three assists and six rebounds. Perfect from the line. As she wasted no time at all. Under three minutes in regulation. As Customs is seeing this game get out of hand despite that shot right there. Sporting on the way to remain undefeated heading into the final day of group play. And the ball movement continues to glow with that three ball. And another giveaway as Sporting gets five quick points out of, the, out of that. And that leads into a timeout. Two minutes and change left in the final match of day four of the AWBO.
Five quick points for Sporting. Brings the lead up to 34. As we approach the final two minutes of the game. Sporting with their lowest scoring performance in the tournament so far. They average 106 and a half per game. Oh, wide jumper for Nosefat Jemu goes to make it 89 to 57. R. Rahan straight to Amir with a game's leading score. Musov looking for the ball. And instead, they draw the foul. And as Minar Yusuf heads to the line, we'll take a look at the upcoming schedule. The final day of group play here in the AWBL. At 12.30 local time, will be Equity Bank versus Overdose Upstation. That will kick day five off. Followed by Interclube and ASPAC at 3.30 p.m. local time. Then at 6.30 local time, it will be CNSS taking on Nigerian Customs as Sierra Diller takes it away, takes it in herself, draws the foul. So Sierra Dillard and the rest of Sporting will have a key matchup, their final in group play to wrap up day five tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. local time as they take on KPA. And then once those games have concluded, all teams will take a day off on Saturday in preparation of the tournament part of the AWBL, which begins on Sunday. Dillard misses the second free throw. Amir picks it back up. Now it's out in the corner. Amir, tough shot, but she can't get it. Final minute and 30. I think it was last touch by Customs, and it was. Wrapping up day four of competition in the inaugural FIBA African Women's Basketball League. Here's who has been known as the African Women's Champions Cup with the home team who has the ball now. And the defending champions and the host team as Amir gets the rebound and the putback. Final 60 seconds. And it's stolen. And on the other end, Dillard can't get it either. Dillard, a third chance, can't get it. And she is obviously frustrated. The second and third chance opportunities. Sarah Dillard at the line. Misses another free throw. She has missed three straight after going two for two. And gets that one to go. So 94 to 57 with 54 seconds remaining. And we'll take another break. Timeout on the floor.
Final minute of play in the fourth quarter. Sporting has ran away with this game since the second quarter. And there was a time where these two were just starting the second quarter, and it was 20 to 18 in favor of Sporting. Destiny Pitts woke Sporting up with three triples to begin the second quarter, and Sporting hasn't looked back ever since. Customs will appear to drop to one and two as we approach the final day of competition. Great coverage from Sporting as the shot clock winds down. Customs has to find a quick shot. Opara and unable to get a shot off to end the shot clock. 32 seconds to play. And Customs was able to get three players in double-digit scoring figures. And same with Sporting. Diller to Yusuf. Nearly everybody has touched the ball in this possession besides Emir. And now she does. Will it pay off as the shot clock runs out? And it does. An extreme dividends as R. Ray Han gets it to go. And all players from Sporting have scored. Opara holds it out. And the steal. And that's the ball game. Sporting with another convincing victory as they defeat Customs 96 to 57 off of 43 percent shooting. So that wraps up day four of competition to the 2023 FIBA after Women's Basketball League. Leading scorer for Customs is Kim Akarari and Ola Olawatomi Taiwo, 14 points apiece. For Sporting, the player of the game goes to Hager Amir, 26 points 11 rebounds, three assists along with four blocks. Not to mention, she was perfect at the charity stripe with an eight for eight performance. Final look at the daily schedule for tomorrow. Remember, all games will start half an hour later than usual. Equity Bank and Overdose Upstation will kick things off at 12.30, followed by Interclube and ASPAC, along with CNSS going up against Nigeria Customs and Sporting, and KPA will wrap the game the day off at 9.30 p.m. local time. So be sure to tune in for all of those games starting again at 12.30 p.m. local time tomorrow. We hope you're able to join us here on YouTube wherever you may be. A big thank you to all of our commentators and our broadcast crew who helped put this all together in day four of this competition. And we hope you continue to watch FIBA and all the outstanding tournaments along as the coverage live from the Alexandria Sporting Club and this is where the inaugural AWBL is taking place. Again, your final today, Customs defeats, Customs losing to Sporting, rather, 96-57. to Sporting remains undefeated in Group A play. They go up to 3-0, and and Customs drops to 1-2. and Now this is Aaron Sanders saying so long wherever you may be.